Hi guys, as you know, recently Xiaomi released the new Mi 11 uh, with the Snapdragon 888 processor, which is supposedly the flagship SoC of next year. And uh, I can't wait to test it out. Of course, I've already placed order uh, from a friend in China because as you can uh, see, the device is only available for sale in China. And um, um, But it will take a bit of time for it to arrive in Singapore so that I can test it by myself. But at the same time, I've already seen quite a few test results from the Chinese Twitter, which is called Weibo. And I'll actually show you the results here. Uh, to be honest, the, the results do not seem very good for the Snapdragon 888. I had very high hope for it, but it seems that this processor is more of a failure than a success. As a disclaimer, these tests are not done by me. Uh, these are taken from other people, other KOLs on Weibo. Uh, so I take no credit in these results. But uh, I think the credibility of these people is good. Uh, their tests are usually scientific and accurate. Uh, firstly, let's look at the performance test. Uh, let's start with uh, Geekbench 5, which is of CPU performance. As you can see, the performance of the Snapdragon 888 is nothing to complain about. It's right there at the top of all Android SoCs, uh, both in terms of single core and multi core. And uh, if we look at the GFX bench, uh, which is of GPU performance, we can also see a very healthy improvement in terms of performance over the uh, last year Snapdragon 865. And then uh, for N22, the performance is also very good. Uh, it scored more than 700,000 uh, points, uh, which is the best of all Android devices to date. But the issue with this chip is that it's not efficient. At least it's not as efficient as uh, Qualcomm advertised it to be. Uh, you can actually see from this screenshot, after uh, one run of Antutu, the temperature actually rose by 12 degrees and the battery dropped by 4%. This is not a good um, performance at all. If you see my previous tests, none of the devices I tested uh, has the temperature rose by 12 degrees. It's just uh, too ridiculous, right? Uh, most of them is just uh, 4 degrees, 5 degrees, and uh, at most it's less than 10. So 12 degrees is just too much. It means the device generated too much heat that it was not able to dissipate. We also perform a spec INT test, a spec int, uh, which is considered a very scientific and controlled CPU test. And that tech also used this test to uh, test most of the mobile SOCs to compare the performance and power efficiency. In the spec int test, the Snapdragon 888 actually has amazing performance. It's higher than any other Android SOC to date but the power consumption is uh, just too high. So in this test, the Snapdragon 888 actually scored 26% higher than the Snapdragon 865. But at the same time, it consumes 65% more power. Okay, And the single core power consumption of 3.35 is almost close to that of the Exynos 990, which we all know is a failure because of the too high power consumption. For mid-core, the performance improvement is uh, incremental, but the power consumption is also noticeably higher than the Snapdragon 865. So this is actually a very alarming sign for the Snapdragon 888. If the power consumption is too high, and the device itself is not able to dissipate so much power, it's going to throttle very hard. And uh, no matter how strong the performance is, it will not be able to run at its maximum performance. And uh, you may see starters in games or any other high load uh, use cases. And this uh, next guy, he tested the uh, PUBG Mobile at HDR60 FPS. And he says the uh, current is mostly 0 0.8 to 1 ampere. 
and uh, um, this means the power consumption is something like uh, three point two to four watt. Like if we times the current with uh, voltage, and this means uh, the Snapdragon eight eight. 888 actually consumes about the same power as the Snapdragon 865 uh, when playing the PUBG mobile game. Uh, because according to my past tests, you can check my previous videos, the Snapdragon 865 actually use about the 3.2 or 3.5 depending on which device model we are looking at. Uh, of power while playing PUBG Mobile at 60 FPS at uh, HDR setting. Uh, so it seems there is no apparent efficiency improvement from the Snapdragon 865 while playing uh, demanding games like the PUBG Mobile. By the way, he also says uh, he, he played for about half an hour and the, the battery usage usage was about 9%. So it dropped from 86% to 77%. And next, I also have this uh, 3D Mark Wildlife Unlimited stress test of the Mi 11. And uh, you can actually see that the stability is uh, 90%, which is pretty similar to what I've tested on the Mi 20 Pro. You can check out my previous test on the Mi 20 Pro and it actually has something like a, 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 uh, 89% uh, stability. So um, there is no um, apparent improvement of uh, stability there. And there is also this um, uh, reviewer. He actually tested the Genshin Impact game on Mi 11. The, device could not maintain a stable 60 FPS in the game because of the uh, high power draw and uh, high heat generation. So according to the test result, the device could maintain mostly 60 FPS for the first uh, 9 to 10 minutes. And uh, after that, the device temperature actually reached 50 degrees, which is very, very hot and it started to throttle to something like a 30 FPS also. And uh, lastly, I'll post a, a combined result of, for, of most of the tests for the Snapdragon 888. And you can compare this to the results from Annette Tech maybe, or from my previous uh, results, and to see where the Snapdragon 888 actually is in terms of performance and uh, power and efficiency. So in conclusion, my point is that the Snapdragon 888 is indeed very good for performance, but it does not bring us the efficiency improvements Qualcomm promised. And uh, as a result, I expect any devices ha which has the Snapdragon 888 SoC to become hot very quick quickly while playing demanding games like the Genshin or PUBG Mobile. And the device might throttle very hard while playing these games, and uh, the sustained performance may not be very good. But of course, I'll do all these tests and post videos when my Mi 11 actually arrives. That may take one or two weeks. So subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more videos.